So hi guys, again we are here for a video regarding our lesson 1 din sa NAV5 no operational use of radar and ARPA. So I hope you are doing good no with your academics no and I hope that some of the videos that I had uploaded in the past had helped you in your academics no but For now, now we will be having this uh, first lesson for the NAV5, the operational use of radar and ARPA, which actually talks about the basic principles of of the radar and ARPA natin. No? And yun po. So we will be able to know the principle uh, principles of the radar, uh, know the safe distances, no, and uh, what are the radiation hazards, the precautions, the the characteristics of the radar and familiarize the external and the internal uh, factors that could affect and of course the performance standards for our radar. Now, with the, when it comes to radar natin, so the radar, no, uh, the radio detection and ranging natin na device on board the ship, no, of course, with, with, uh, With the ARPA, no, automatic radar plotting aid natin, ARPA is quite different. Kasi sa radar, i-detect niya lang. No? I-detect niya yung, yung target na yan. Uh, but the, the ARPA will automatically compute no, for, for the CPA, for the bearing and the distance. No need for you kasi kung sa ARPA kasi, ikaw pa yung magpa-plot, ikaw pa yung mag, kumbaga parang mag-trial maneuver, ikaw pa yung kumbaga magche-check no kung if that certain if that certain uh, a ship will be in collision course with you anong pinaka the best na na course for you no so the arpa no we could kumbaga uh, make our life easier whenever we are trying to detect for collision we we use it for collision avoidance no because it automatically computes for the numbers that you are supposed to compute it man manually. Now, radar makes use of the phenomena, phenomena that we call echo. No? Echo siya. So, there is a short burst of electromagnetic energy which is thrown out and bounces off the target and then returns. No? So, si, si radar natin magbibigay siya ng electromagnetic energy and then upon, you know, kapag, na, kapag ano siya sa isang target, buwabalik po yung wave na yun, and ayun pong echo na nire-receive ng ating target. So, parang for example din sa, sa, sa sound signal din, kapag ang nagkaroon ng sound signal, kapag wala siyang babangga ang target, the, the, the wave will move and move and move until mag-dissipate siya. But there, if there is this kumbaga na mababanggaan yung target, usually it echoes back. So, yun po. The sound waves travel through air at speed of approximately 1,100 feet per second. No? And if an echo requires 8 seconds to return, no? if, a little bit of computation, 8 seconds to return to the sound sources after its origination. So, that would be 8 times 8, uh, 1,100, so that gives us 8,800. But, but, dahil ito 8 seconds to return, So, ibig sabihin, may papunta na yun at pabalik. So, that would probably be divided by 2. So, the actual distance of the object is 4,400 feet per second. So, it actually, the, the echo is the, the, the echo is at around 4 seconds lang nung nakabalik. Nung pinuntahan niya, 4 seconds. So, pabalik siya, 4 seconds. Parang ganun. So, they're, they're trying to, our, our radar and the, the, the radar would compute na for that one and then it would display no, on on the monitor so, parang ganito so it, it gives us that display on the monitor pag send niyang ganun tapos kapag bumangga no, may, may indicate sa ating radar screen kung saan banda yung target na yun sige so stand, meron tayong standby period may mga terminologies tayong ginagamit no? ang standby period na yan is a period to 3 to 5 minutes no? na isa standby natin ang ating radar to warm up the electronic parts ng ating radar o ng ARPA natin. Meron din tayong directional uh, aerial directional aerial natin, the direction of the radar antenna natin. 
Meron tayong echo pulses na, na terminology. Echo pulses are short burst of radar waves which return to the radar from the object. And here the kinds of radar pulses natin. No? We have short pulse and the long pulse. No? Uh, what happens in a short pulse is that uh, it's quite a better range resolution no? because it plots two closer targets as distinct one. So parang katulad nito, we're in kapag ang target talaga uh, na ano siya, na, na detect, it displays two different targets talaga siya. Whereas kasi sa long pulse, kasi nag, nagka-combine siya parang isang target lang siya. Lesser sensitivity, targets are smaller in diameter when it's short pulse na type of radar. And kapag long pulse naman, yun na nga po, uh, better sensitivity siya. And that the target are quite bigger in diameter as well. So the types of radar antenna natin, we have your tilted parabolic type. And we have, which is used in the airports and naval ships, and we have also the slotted waveguide scanner, which are used mostly by the ships no? and port controls and traffic sea controls. So you might be wondering, no, ano nga ba yung purpose ng radar natin? The importance of the radar is for collision avoidance, no, and we we use it as well when navigating through at night, no, because yun yung magiging mata natin, no. And during the restricted visibility as well, no? Magiging mata siya natin, no? And for the position fixing na rin, no? Sa position fixing kasi, ibibigay niya yung bearing, ibibigay niya yung, yung range, no? Na radar, sa radar na yan. Tapos, pwede natin siya i-plot, no? On the, on the chart, no? If we want to confirm the, the position or our position on the chart, no? Whenever we, for example, merong cliff, o merong island, no? Kukunin natin ang range and, uh, range and bearing, range and bearing, no? Tapos, ipa-plot siya natin on the chart and that would confirm our position on the chart. Safe working distance natin, the Canadian Coast Guard has completed calculations on both rotating and fixed scanning antennas. Now, when a scanning antenna is rotating, the safe working distance now is 0.2 meters away from the antenna. Bakit ganun? Uh, kasi kapag ang antenna nagro-rotate, ang ating exposure kasi would be kasi ang kapag nagro-rotate siya, hindi siya permanent na sa isang lugar na 'yon, naghahagis siya ng ano, naghahagis siya ng radio wave. Kumbaga, kasabay siya sa ikot din, no? Unlike na kumbaga kapag naka-steady ang antenna niya, tuloy-tuloy uh, siya na magi-emit ng ating electromagnetic energy, no? And Ito nga, nasabi dito na there is less danger of continuous exposure over a long period of time for those na rotating ang antena niya. Kapag yun kasi stationary, as I said, parang nag nagtatransmit siya on that certain direction ng tuloy-tuloy. But this RF radiation hazards, no? radar peak power may reach a million watts or more. RF radiation hazards exist in the vicinity of the radar transmitting antenna but not on the monitor. No, na, na pinipindot natin sa ano. But there are uh, safe working distances that we are need to observe as well. No? Whenever there, we have equipment on board the ship. So these hazards are present not only in front of an antenna but also on the side. But this will not actually produce a sufficient sensation of pain or discomfort discomfort to warn you of the injury. No, kasi hindi naman siya ganun talaga ka, ano, ang exposure levels natin will not be that really sufficient for us to feel the pain. But if you will be experiencing pain so uh, it will be better that you tell the officer or you will tell the, the ship's doctor if there is. Personnel should observe the following precautions no, to ensure that the Persons are not exposed to harmful RF radiation whenever working with a radar. No? Visual inspection of feed horns, open end of the open ends of waveguides and other opening that emits RF energy should not be made unless the equipment is properly secured or tagged for that purpose. So hindi tayo basta basta lumalapit kapag nagtatransmit or uh, hindi tayo lumalapit kapag gumagana siya. Operating and maintenance personnel should be observe all RF radiation hazard signs posted. So most of the time, 
we need two post posters no or signs for for them to notify people who are who intends to work on the radar area so yun po So, ito na rin din, no? all persons should observe RF radiation hazards. So, warning signs that point out the existence of RF radiation hazards in a specific location or area. Ensure that the radiation hazard warning signs are available and posted. Ensure that those radar antennas that normally rotate and rotate it continuously while regulating are, are trained to known to a non-safe bearing. Ensure that those antennas do not normally rotate are pointed away from inhabited areas. Tandaan po ito. And dummy load should be employed where applicable in transmitting uh, equipment. Wait lang, yung ating. Yes, sir. Yan yung ating camera. Sorry. Yun po. So, internal factors natin that affects the radar reception. The carrier frequency. And the frequency at which radio frequency is being generated, so we have this pulse repetition rate, the PRR, is the number of pulses transmitted per second. It determines the maximum measurable range of the radar natin. You know? So, uh, the distance between say, isang pulse to pulse to isang pulse, yun po yung ating pulse repetition period natin. Peak power is the useful powerful range of the radar. And the pulse length is measured in microsecond. It is the transmission of time of a single pulse of radio frequency energy. The longer pulse length, the greater is the range capability of the radar. Because of the greater amount of energy transmitted. So the longer the pulse length, the greater is the range capability. Yun po. Uh, related po sila. Antenna, scanner height, no? So, the higher the antenna, the greater range can be obtained by the radar. No? So, parang may ano tayo dito, may concept tayo dito na kapag syempre, kapag mataas ka, mas mataas sa lugar, mas malapad yung may kita mo, yung scope. So, ganun din po siya. And the material condition of the equipment as well. Depende kung anong made of siya. Here are some external factors that affects the radar reception. Kumbaga, external siya sa equipment. No? And when there is size and height of the contact. Since radar wave propagation is almost line of sight, the height of the contact of prime importance is of prime importance up to certain limits. Contacts which have larger reflecting areas will return stronger echoes than contacts having similar reflecting areas. Natin. Number two is material composition. The ability of various substances to reflect radar pulses depends on the intrinsic electrical properties of those substances. So, for example po, kapag ang, syempre, no, na-detect ng radar natin is metal, no, or ang tubig mismo, yan ay isang good radar reflector and would uh, makikita siya on our radar. Madedetect siya kagad ng radar natin. Kapag ice, medyo fair siya na, na grade <laughs> ng radar reflector and poor medyo mahihirapan tayong mag-detect ng mga wood at saka fiberglass natin. No? Sa ating radar. Shape of the target. Flat surface of the right angles to the at right angles to the radar beam such as side of the steel ships or a steep cliff along the shore will reflect very strong echoes. No? Kapag ang, ang shape niya. No? Aspect of the target will also be one factor kasi for example, if that certain ship is nakaharap sa'yo, so medyo mas manipis siya, kapag nakagilid siya, syempre, mas iba yung, mas malaki yung area na magbabounce yung, yung echo doon sa lugar na yun. External factors affecting radar reception as well. Uh, texture of the target. The smoother the surface of the target, the, the poorer it will be as a radar reflector. Distance of the target, the greater the distance, of course, mas malayo siya, mas hindi siya ma-detect basta-basta. Weather. Of course, the weather could affect, as, as we said no, kanina, na-discuss natin na ang water would be a good weather reflector. So, kapag naulan, syempre, na-detect siya ng radar, no? kasi 
a, a pulse would would uh, reflect back and reflect back siya as an echo kapag na, natamaan siya sa tubig or na, natamaan niya yung tubig no yun po kaya meron tayong ding mga anti cyclater mga ganun kasi minsan kapag mataas yung height ng wave na detect siya ng radar din no mga nagiging false echo siya parang ganun Propagation is the process when the radio wave travel on the atmosphere with its frequency involved in it, no? Kasi we have this one, no? A picture of different radar propagations natin that we could see. Meron sa refraction, standard refraction, super refraction, and then ito po, no? So, yun. It affects as well the radar natin na... Uh, interpretation natin. So, bearing and resolution as well, range and resolution na discuss na natin ito kanina. And we also have this uh, resolution A, 477, performance standards of radar, 12, 12 and, radar, uh, and resolution A, 2788, supplement on standards of navigational equipment natin. So, it was uh, effective on 1 September 1985 we're in ito po sa ano ito sa performance standard no included sa performance standard natin no na, sa minimum operational display and area diameter ng ating barko ito yung magiging uh, ano niya minimum operational safety diameter sa display area ito ang recommended kapag malaking barko ito siya kapag medyo medium lang kapag maliit ito recommended but notice, ang trial maneuver is required talaga sa malalaking barko. Ang auto acquisition of targets is required also sa malalaking barko. And ito po. No? So minimum acquired radar tar target capacity, mas marami kapag malaki yung barko. Minimum activated AAS, 20, 30, tsaka wala. 100, 150, 200. No? When it comes to minimum sleeping, sleeping AAS target capacity. So, yun po. Kasi integrated na naman po ang ating ARPA and it is connected to our AIS so it could detect, no, it could, uh, it could, kumbaga mag, pag nag-appear sa screen ng, ng radar natin, uh, appear na rin dyan yung pangalan, no, ng barko na yun because it is connected to our AIS as well. So, yun po. Meron din po tayong symbols na ginagamit, no. Uh, IMO symbols natin for the radio equipment natin, radar equipment natin and heat, ito po siya no, IMO symbols natin for radar control, so that's the end actually, this is the end of the lesson 1 natin for for the first part no, we'll be having lesson 2 as well, no, continuation ng no, ating discussions on the next video set up and maintain optimum radar display now we'll try our best to create a video for this one, and measure ranges and bearing accurately as well so, yun po ang ating first topic for this video and I hope you learned something. No, I wish you all the best. Pakasal <laughs> lang ano. I wish you all uh, safety lang always. No, and uh, God bless po sa lahat. And thank you for watching this video po. Thank you po and see you po.